The first day the trucks stop, nobody's really going to notice. The roads will be clear. People won't be complaining about not being able to see around the semi-trucks. But in reality, few people will even notice what's about to unfold. It won't take long for shortages to start showing up in our local grocery stores. On day two, the first shelves to go empty will be fresh foods. Supermarkets receive shipments of fresh foods of all kinds on a daily basis. Milk, eggs, meat, bread, fish, and produce all arrive on their docks early in the morning. Grocery stores only stock about three days worth of food. So by day three, even without a run on the stores, the grocery stores are going to be running dry. The shortages will start spreading out from there to other stores. And as people begin to realize the seriousness of the situation, they'll start hitting hardware stores, sporting goods stores, and the liquor stores. Basically anywhere that has anything that might help them to survive. Within the first week, the country will largely shut down, as a large percentage of businesses will have closed. Even if the only intended to be temporary, shortages will be widespread, even to the point where Amazon doesn't have any inventory to ship. Now by the time a month has passed, shortages of food will be driving people to starvation. With some local neighborhoods and communities will come together. In many cases, the people trying to organize these efforts will be people who don't have food. So they will try to forcibly take food from people who have it, not only from preppers like us, but from the farmers as well.